People ask why I still use Drexel FM160 even though it is toxic. And the answer is because it is effective. And that's my primary reason. I mean, if it doesn't work, I don't use it. So, uh, it is a valid question though. How toxic is it? And I've seen it being discussed on chat rooms quite a lot. And this is a ridiculous thing to discuss on a chat room. If you're on a chat room, you have internet. If you have internet, you can download the MSDS, or Material Safety Data Sheet. There's no discussion. Just download it and read it. You don't need someone's opinion on this. Okay, so that's what I did. I've got the MSDSs for these things. Um, now, before we go over this, what I'm, what I'm gonna do is kind of go over LD50 real quick. LD50 is the dose of a poison that will kill 50% of your target um, population. So, for example, if you have 100 rats and you feed them each one a dose of LD50, you can expect half of them to die. All right? So, um, and, it's, and it's rated in grams per kilogram of body mass, which is kind of a lot for a rat. But still, um, that's how it works. And, and, and the concept, the key concept, is the less it takes to kill you, the more poisonous it is. So if it takes 10 grams to kill a rat, that's a lot safer than something that only takes one gram to kill a rat. Okay? So, with that in mind, let's look at the relative toxicities of our various substances that we might encounter in aircrete. And number one is FM160, and it has a uh, LD50 of 5,000 milligrams per kilogram. So if you weigh one kilogram, don't eat more than five grams, you'll have a 50-50 chance of dying. Okay, so is that a lot? Is 500 milligrams a lot? Let's compare that with regular old cement, because you're going to be using cement if you're making aircrete, and cement has an LD50 of 500. So that means that FM160 is 10 times less toxic than cement. Okay, exactly 10 times. It takes five milligrams of FM150 to kill you takes half a milligram of liquid concrete per uh, kilogram of body mass to kill you. That's a ridiculous comparison of course um, because what we really should be doing is comparing foaming agent to foaming agent. So the other one, the one that uh, is uh, in um, your seventh generation is called uh, laurel sulfate or sodium laurel sulfate. Now, um, its LD50 is about 1,200. Okay, it, at first glance, it would appear that your 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 uh, seventh generation dish soap is four times more toxic than um, FM160. But consider that only a third of it is this sodium laurel sulfate. Okay. So that means if you take that it's four times more toxic and then divide it by three, since there's only three, you get four thirds. So it's only one third more toxic in the long run. Ounce for ounce, it's only one third more toxic, give or take, than FM160. And to me, uh, it's a wash. You know, a little more toxic this way or that way. But yeah, yeah, seventh generation is more toxic. Not only that, but sodium laurel sulfate is uh, dangerous to marine life and is persistent in the environment, whereas FM160 is biodegradable and is not a threat to uh, marine life. So if you're caring about the environment, obviously seventh generation's got a little catching up to do. So why is it considered a greener option? Well, basically because that's how it's pitched. The uh, Unilever Corporation wants you to think it's green. And believe me, Unilever's got a lot of stake in this because they've been caught doing some pretty nasty things. The number of times they've been caught buggering Mother Nature is just um, awesome. I mean, recently, I don't know if you read about this, but they've been caught knowingly dumping mercury into the environment. Okay? So, uh, yeah, they try to put on a green face as far as personal toxicity. Uh, they're both about the same, and neither one of them are bad. You just can't or shouldn't get them in your eyes. You know, wear your eye protection or figure out some other way to, like, keep it out of your eyes if you're a real splashy person. Um, and you'll be fine. 